You have learnt a lot in quantum mechanics earlier, like introduction and history, energy and momentum of a photon, photoelectric effect and wave particle duality. Today's lecture is a complete course as I have included some more topics from Cambridge A-level physics curriculum, the latest one from 2022 to 2024. And you will learn energy level in atoms and line spectra and the appearance and formation of emission and absorption line spectra as well. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is electromagnetic spectrum. The word spectrum or its plural spectra was first used scientifically in optics by Newton in 17th century. It was used to describe the rainbow of colors in visible light after passing it through a prism. With the advancement in scientific understanding of light, it is now applied to the entire electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum is a band of colors as seen in a rainbow or the entire range of wavelengths as light is separated into its components due to refraction or bending to different degrees based on each color's wavelength, either through a prism or through a diffraction grating or through a water droplet in the atmosphere. Therefore, it may also be described in terms of a characteristic series of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation emitted or absorbed by a substance. Remember, spectra is a phenomenon which is explained in terms of light as a particle or a photon. We will consider different kinds of spectra like line spectra, emission and absorption spectra, and we will study them in details in our next lesson and the origin of the spectral lines and energy levels as well after that. This is the spectrum observed when white light passes through a diffraction grating. And this is the spectrum of colors we see in the screen when white light is passing out through a prism. See the refraction. First refraction occurs here at this boundary and then this is the second refraction and the phenomena is known as dispersion. The separation of white light into seven colors is called dispersion of light and the colors which we obtain on the screen are called spectrum and this is the separation of seven colors separation into seven colors of sunlight see after passing through a water droplet this is the magnified view of water drops in the atmosphere so first refraction occurs here at this boundary total internal reflection occurs and this is the second refraction and then white light is separated into seven colors and this colors which we obtain is called spectrum of light. So in fact, uh, from discovery of electron in 19th century by J.J. Thompson to thermionic emission, the photoelectric effect, photons and the electromagnetic spectrum, the work function, wave particle duality, spectra and energy levels, radio frequency bands, color visions, microwave ovens, a potential well, emission and absorption spectra and fireworks, flame tests and infrared spectroscopy. All these concepts come under quantum mechanics. Now energy of different spectral lines in the electromagnetic spectrum is calculated using Planck's equation. E equals H nu. Now left hand side represents the energy of a photon and right hand side is the frequency of electromagnetic radiation. So left hand side is the energy of a particle and right hand side is the frequency of a wave. This is absolutely amazing. Evidence that energy is quantized comes from spectral lines and emission and absorption spectra as we observe discrete lines. As this energy comes only in lumps called quanta and as each line represents a specific frequency or wavelength then by substituting the value of the specific wavelength or frequency of light in this Planck's equation, we can verify that energy of each photon of light is quantized and we will solve some numericals when we will be doing uh, different types of spectra in the next lesson uh, in which we will study line spectrum, emission and absorption spectrum as well. 
Now, in the next slides, I have described in depth different regions of electromagnetic spectrum. You will also study a relationship between energy of each region corresponding to its frequency or wavelength that verifies Planck's equation E equals H nu. I have also discussed there why we use electron volt as unit of energy instead of joules and I have defined electron volt as well. Moreover, there will be a table that highlights visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum that contain discrete lines of each wavelength and corresponding values of frequency and energy. Now here we see a subdivision of the electromagnetic spectrum into different regions. And we notice that as we move from mid infrared to mid ultraviolet region, wavelength of the photons goes on decreasing and frequency goes on increasing. Hence, the corresponding value of energy goes on increasing as well. And this energy of the photon is equal to HF. As F is a property of wave, so according to famous wave equation where C is equal to F lambda, we substitute value of F which is C over lambda. Hence, this equation becomes energy of a photon is equal to HC over lambda where C is the speed of light in vacuum and its value is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second. It must be noted that energy of the photons is far less than a joule. Therefore, we use another unit of energy, the electron volt. And one electron volt is equal to 1.0602 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 joule. And it is defined as the energy transport when an electron travels through a potential difference of one volt. This we have studied in our previous video. And 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb is the charge on electron. Now here um, we have selected only the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum and it is quite obvious that we get discrete lines of each wavelength. And each wavelength's energy is also given here. And in this table we get each individual color's wavelength, frequency and photon energy. And it is quite apparent that as we move from higher wavelength region to lower wavelength region, the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation goes on increasing and hence the corresponding value of energy also increases. Therefore, ultraviolet light is very dangerous, X-rays and gamma rays even more dangerous as these are very high energy radiations due to their high frequencies as can be seen in this spectrum. Welcome to my channel. Today we will study different types of spectra like emission and absorption spectra. Moreover, we will also differentiate between a continuous spectrum and line spectrum. Line spectra are used to identify elements and hence to deduce which elements are most commonly present in the stars. Whereas absorption spectra are very useful for astronomers. The absorption lines in the spectrum of a star or galaxy give us a fingerprint of the elements present. If the Doppler effect shifts, this fingerprint to a longer wavelength, we can calculate how fast the star or galaxy is moving away from us. A continuous spectrum, like the spectrum of white light, shows that it consists of a range of wavelength from around 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 meters for violet to around 7 into 10 raised to the power minus 7 meters for red. When white light splits up into a continuous spectrum, as it passes through a diffraction grating, each color has a unique wavelength. If the source is narrowed and is viewed through a diffraction grating, a line spectrum is seen. These are also known as emission line spectra and show the composition of light emitted by hot gases of the elements. As an example, there are three examples here. This one is emission line spectra from mercury. This one is from helium. And this line spectra is that of from cadmium vapors. Now absorption line spectra. 
when white light is passed through cool gases like cool mercury vapors and then through a diffraction grating an absorption line spectrum is formed certain wavelengths are absorbed hence black lines appear in the continuous white line spectrum now when the light from stars like sun is analyzed we observe absorption line spectrum light of all wavelengths in the visible range is emitted as the interior of the sun is very hot this light has to pass through the cooler outer atmosphere or layers of the star cooler atmosphere absorbs some specific wavelengths showing dark lines in sun spectrum as shown in this diagram now question number 1 figure shows part of the energy level diagram of an imaginary atom the arrows represent three transitions between the energy levels these three arrows a b and c for each of these transitions you need to calculate the energy of the photon calculate the frequency and wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation emitted or absorbed and c part is state whether the transition contributes to an emission or an absorption spectrum this diagram is not two scale so this energy is given in joules and just see the direction of the arrows here it is upward and in first two cases the direction of the arrow is downward kindly note that the energy goes on decreasing from upward to to downwards okay so these energy levels are higher states and this is the lower energy state so in a and b what happens electrons jump from higher energy states to lower energy states and in c part where the arrow is in the opposite direction what happens electron jumps from a lower energy level to a higher energy level so in order for the electron to jump from a lower energy level to higher energy level obviously it has to absorb a photon right so in this case you will see that in c part you will answer in such a way like this is refers to absorption spectrum and these a and b will be emission spectrum and let's see how we calculate the energy of the photon and frequency and wavelengths in each case and in this case i will just mention in the next slide that basically you need to know two equations one is planck's equation e is equal to h nu and second one is famous wave equation c is equal to nu lambda i will explain these two in the next slide because only these two equations will be needed to calculate the energy frequency and wavelengths so as i have mentioned already that we will make use of planck's equation and famous wave equation in order to find out frequency and wavelengths and to find out the energy of each transition we will actually calculate the difference of energy between each transition a b and c as shown in the previous diagram and it must be noted that energy of the electron in the atom is said to be quantized that is has discrete values only this is the most fundamental statement of quantum mechanics that we have already studied so many times earlier so based on the previous explanation the energies in three cases comes out to be equal to these values and frequencies and wavelengths are calculated using planck's equation and as i have already explained that transition a and b correspond to emission spectrum and c is absorption spectrum because in c part electron has to absorb some photon in order to jump in from lower energy level to higher energy level question number 2 figure shows another energy level diagram in this case energies are given in electron volts see the label from the list below state which photon energies could be absorbed by such an atom 6 electron volt 9 electron volt 11 electron volt 20 electron volt 25 electron volts 34 electron volts and 45 electron volts now based on the idea of energy levels we will calculate the energy of two between each transition by taking the difference of energies here labeled here okay though this diagram is not two scale but we need to calculate the magnitudes of the energy only because energy is a scalar quantity okay so it doesn't matter it's to scale or not to scale so in the next 
slide, I have calculated the result of the question and you will see that there are two values only which do not correspond to any transition. Okay. So by looking at the diagram, you can see that 9 electron volts, 11 electron volts, 25 electron volts, 34 electron volt and 45 electron volt from the given list correspond to differences between energy levels. So they can all be absorbed. Whereas 6 electron volt and 20 electron volt do not correspond to differences between energy level and so cannot be absorbed. Thank you for watching. Quantum mechanics or quantum physics is a branch of physics which to a large extent is conceptually abstract and very mathematical in nature. Quantum mechanics has proved to be a storehouse of ideas of tremendous practical value. Despite its abstract preciseness, radically new ideas in quantum physics help to unlock deep secrets of the world, especially at the microscopic level where classical physics apparently breaks down. Quantum physics has a vast and concrete everyday applications. Quantum mechanical effects are involved in all the phenomena like transistors, semiconductors, television, computers, lasers, instruments for communication, education, energy requirements, and also in the field of medicine. Planck's quantization, Bohr's frequency rule, Einstein's quantization of energy, Schrodinger's equation, de Broglie's wavelength, and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. These are the most outstanding work of scientists who won Nobel Prize in this field of quantum mechanics. The whole of quantum theory is developed based on the magic formula E is equal to H nu that establishes a universal relationship between the frequency of an oscillating process and the energy associated with such a process. H is Planck's constant, which is a universal constant. Its value is 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules into seconds. It was discovered by Max Planck in 1900. The energy is not arbitrary and continuous in value, but is quantized, that is, has discrete values only. Now, please note that quantum is the minimum amount of a physical entity involved in any interaction. And a photon is a quantum of electromagnetic radiation exhibiting wave particle duality. Its rest mass is zero and it always moves with the speed of light. It exhibits both particle and waves properties. Now, from discovery of electrons in 19th century by J.J. Thompson to thermionic emission, the photoelectric effect, photons and the electromagnetic spectrum, the work function, wave particle duality, spectra and energy levels, radio frequency bands, color vision, microwave ovens, a potential well, emission and absorption spectra, and fireworks, flame tests, and infrared spectroscopy. All these concepts come under quantum mechanics. It is worth mentioning here to remember Stephen Hawking's great contribution, the theory of everything. It proposes a framework of understanding of all of physics, combining the quantum mechanics and the classical physics into a unified approach, which explains the laws of the universe. Stephen Hawking was able to elucidate a formulation that unified quantum mechanics and classical physics as it pertains to the description of black holes. Light as a particle and the photon. Corpuscular or particle theory of light was put forward arguably by Descartes in 1637. This corpuscular theory of light was largely developed by Newton in 1672 and was predominant for more than 100 years. It took precedence over Hagen's wave theory of light. 
Newton's theory failed to explain the diffraction, interference, and polarization of light. Therefore, it was abandoned. It re-emerged in the 20th century as Einstein described Newton's conception of physical reality. Albert Einstein based his ideas on the work of a German physicist, Max Planck. Part of the work Max Planck looked at in 1901 was about black body radiations. He suggested that electromagnetic energy comes only in lumps called quanta, which is plural of quantum. That is, energy is emitted in discrete form. He said that E is equal to H nu, where H is Planck's constant and its value is 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules into seconds. It indicates that energy of electromagnetic radiation is proportional to its frequency. In 1905, Albert Einstein formulated an alternative explanation of Planck's theory of radiation from black bodies. He proposed that light might be composed of tiny particles and that electromagnetic radiation could be modeled as these discrete quanta. Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect convinced physicists that light could behave as a stream of particles. We call them photons and believe that all electromagnetic radiation consists of photons. Moreover, Einstein said that individual photons can liberate electrons and stimulate a current demonstrating the particle nature of light. Einstein suggested that each quantum of light energy can provide the energy to knock out one electron from the metal. If the quantum is too small, the electron cannot escape from the metal surface. So when light photons are incident on metal surfaces, electrons are ejected from the surface and these graphs indicate that there is a threshold frequency at which ionization takes place. So back to this equation, E is equal to H nu. On left hand side is energy of a photon in joules and on right hand side is frequency of electromagnetic radiation. So left hand side is energy of a particle and right hand side is frequency of a wave. So this is absolutely amazing. So evidence that energy is quantized comes from spectral lines and emission and absorption spectra as we observe discrete lines. Now here we see a subdivision of the electromagnetic spectrum into different regions and we notice that as we move from mid-infrared to mid-ultraviolet region, wavelength of the photons goes on decreasing and frequency goes on increasing. Hence, the corresponding value of energy goes on increasing as well. And this energy of the photon is equal to HF. As F is a property of wave, so according to famous wave equation where C is equal to F lambda, we substitute value of F which is C over lambda. Hence, this equation becomes energy of a photon is equal to HC over lambda where C is the speed of light in vacuum and its value is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second. It must be noted that energy of the photons is far less than a joule. Therefore, we use another unit of energy, the electron volt. And one electron volt is equal to 1.0602 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 joule. And it is defined as the energy transport when an electron travels through a potential difference of one volt. This we have studied in our previous video. And 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb is the charge on electron. Now here um, we have selected only the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum and it is quite obvious that we get discrete lines of each wavelength and each wavelength energy is also given here and in this table we get each individual color's wavelength, frequency and photon energy and it is quite apparent that as we move from higher wavelength region to lower wavelength region the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation goes on increasing and hence the corresponding value of energy also increases. Therefore, ultraviolet light is very dangerous, x-rays and gamma rays even more dangerous as 
these are very high energy radiations due to their high frequencies as can be seen in this spectrum the photon to recap precisely a photon is a discrete quantum of light or packet of electromagnetic energy that has some specific set of properties its charge is zero its spin is one and it can have two possible orientations clockwise or anti clockwise energy of a photon is given by the equation e is equal to h nu where h is planck's constant and its value is 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules into seconds in si units photons travel at the speed of light in vacuum photons have a momentum are linearly or circularly polarized and have a wavelength associated with them photons are created by atomic transitions thermal motion and by matter antimatter annihilation it must be noted that the total density of the universe is the sum of the energy densities of vacuum matter and photons scientists uh, are studying different theories in which a part of light photons interact with extra galactic magnetic fields resulting in transformation into hypothetical weakly interacting elementary particle or x ions which turn into photons due to the interaction with magnetic fields these theories led scientists to recreate an extremely refined model of the cosmic web and of its magnetic fields cosmic web is a network of filaments composed of gas and dark matter present throughout the universe fair particle duality this lecture is third in our quantum mechanics series earlier we studied the core concepts of quantum mechanics the particulate nature of electromagnetic radiation planck's equation einstein's quantization of energy the photon and its characteristics and the electromagnetic spectrum this included work of some of the pioneers in the field of quantum mechanics who were awarded nobel prize which is an award honoring the best work in some subjects including physics and is viewed as the highest intellectual honor in the world now wave particle duality is a very broad topic therefore i have further divided it in three videos today i will recap briefly the work of the most outstanding scientists and you will learn about other different theories put forward by different scientists in different periods of time to prove that all matter exhibits wave particle duality or wave particle dual nature that is sometimes it behaves as a particle and sometimes it behaves as waves table of contents newton versus hagen jung's double slit experiment planck's quantization albert einstein's quantization of energy de broglie's hypothesis schrodinger wave equation and heisenberg uncertainty principle newton versus hagen whether the light is a particle or a wave the debate on this topic first began in the 17th century newton was convinced from different interpretations of the experimental evidences that light was a particle hagen on the other hand said that light is a wave according to newton's corpuscular theory every source of light like the sun or a candle emit large number of particles called corpuscles in a medium surrounding the source these corpuscles travel in straight lines with high velocity in all possible directions when these particles enter our eyes an image of the object or sensation of vision is produced hagen's principle states that every point on a wave front see this plane wave every point these circular red dots on a wave front give rise to secondary wavelets these small waves which spread out in all the directions with the speed of a wave the new position of the wave front at time t can be determined using hagen's principle this new wave front is formed by drawing a line tangent to all the wavelets this line is tangent to all the wavelets this wave particle debate of light was resolved by famous physicist thomas jung 
double slit experiment. On the basis of interference pattern observed on the screen in this experiment, Zhang arrived at a judgment that light must be a wave as interference is a property of waves. Max Planck. Max Planck's quantization. So on the basis of experimental evidences, Planck's idea of quantization or release of energy in discrete packets formed the basis of quantum mechanics that revolutionized physics. He postulated E equal to H nu, where nu is the frequency of electromagnetic radiation and H is Planck's constant. Its value is 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules into seconds. Now Heinrich Hertz in 1897 conducted an experiment whose results were perfectly explained by Planck's equation. Therefore, the photoelectric effect was accidentally discovered by him, but he could not explain it. Albert Einstein explained photoelectric effect on the basis of quantum theory. When suitable frequency of light is incident on metal surface, electrons are emitted. These are called photoelectrons and phenomena is known as photoelectric emission or photoelectric effect. The Broglie's question was, if photons exhibit wave and particle properties, would all matter do so as well? De Broglie postulated the wave nature of electrons. Einstein appreciated his brilliant idea. De Broglie's theory was proved to be correct after Davison and Germer performed the double slit experiment in 1927 using electrons. An interference pattern was observed by the reflected electrons. Hence, de Broglie's theory of matter having wave properties proved to be correct. He associated waves with matter because electron is a particle, material particle. Due to his revolutionary findings, de Broglie won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1929. His work marked the beginning of the development of wave mechanics. Schrodinger wave equation. Schrodinger formulated a differential equation that describes the wave nature of a quantum mechanical system. The concept of a wave function and its discovery is a significant landmark in the development of quantum mechanics. The wave function and the corresponding energies often called eigenfunctions and eigenvalues respectively describe the quantum state of a particle. In the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, the wave function is the most complete description that can be given of a physical system. Solution to Schrodinger's equation describes system not only at microscopic level like molecular, atomic and subatomic, but also macroscopic systems, possibly even the whole universe. Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Due to the matter wave nature of all quantum objects, Heisenberg stated a principle known as Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which, which is a fundamental property of quantum systems. The principle states that it is not possible to determine accurately the position and momentum of a particle at the same time. There is uncertainty in momentum if position is known accurately and there will be uncertainty in position if the momentum of a particle is known accurately. Therefore, product of uncertainties in the position and momentum of a particle is greater or equal to h over 4 pi where h is Planck's constant. So just to recap briefly, Newton said light is a particle, Hagen said light is a wave. Jung, on the basis of double slit experiment proved that light is a wave. Now Planck's quantization and Albert Einstein's quantization of energy proved uh, particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. It means all these scientists work conclude that light sometimes behave as a particle and sometimes it behaves like waves. So this was the re reason that de Broglie then put forward his question and it was later on proved that not only 
electromagnetic radiation, but all the matter has actually dual nature. So this is all about wave particle duality and Schrodinger uh, uh, formulated a wave equation and Heisenberg stated a principle that if matter has dual nature, then at the same time we cannot determine the position of both quantities accurately. Like if position is known accurately, momentum is uncertain and if momentum is known accurately, we cannot find out the position of the particle at the same time with accuracy. Now in my next video, I will discuss the photoelectric effect in detail. How photoelectric effect provides evidence for a particulate nature of electromagnetic radiation, the significance of threshold frequency. Moreover, I will explain photoelectric phenomena in terms of photon energy and work function and the significance of Einstein photoelectric equation. So after that, I will discuss de Broglie's hypothesis. I will describe and interpret qualitatively the evidence provided by electron diffraction for the wave nature of particles and the relationship for the de Broglie's wavelength lambda equal to h over p, where lambda is the wavelength associated with material particles, h is Planck's constant and p is the momentum of the particle, which is a product of mass and velocity. Thank you for watching. This topic is the photoelectric effect. Under this topic, we will study evidence for particulate nature of electromagnetic radiation, the significance of threshold frequency, photon energy and work function, and significance of Albert Einstein's photoelectric equation. Evidence for particulate nature of electromagnetic radiation. The concept of wave particle duality was developed because of the photoelectric effect. As it was first discovered by Heinrich Hertz, the effect is also called the Hertz effect. The photoelectric effect helped physicists understand the quantum nature of light and electrons. The idea that electromagnetic radiation is made up of packets of energy called photons formed the basis of photoelectric effect. The emitted electron from the metal surface when a photon from the electromagnetic radiation or from the mercury lamp as an example hits on the metal surface is called photoelectron. The Greek word for light is photo, hence the word photoelectrons. This photon-electron interaction is one-to-one, -one. that is, one photon interacts and exchanges energy with one electron only. It must be noted that photoelectric effect takes place only at a certain minimum frequency of electromagnetic radiation known as the cutoff frequency or threshold frequency. As an example here, potassium needs two electron volt energy to eject electron, so if energy of the incident photon is less than 2 electron volt, no photoelectric emission will take place. Like here, energy is 1.77 electron volt, so no electrons will be emitted. The significance of threshold frequency. The minimum frequency of electromagnetic radiation required to release electrons from a metal surface is called the threshold frequency. This threshold frequency varies from metal to metal. As a certain minimum energy is required to be given to an electron to pull it out from the surface of the metal, it means if frequency is below this value, no electrons are ejected from metal. The metals have free electrons that are not held very tightly within the metal. They are called free electrons or conduction electrons as these are free to move about within the atom and are held responsible for electric current, hence these electrons are also known as conduction electrons. Now only a small amount of energy of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 19 joule is required by these electrons to escape from the metal surface. Minimum amount of energy required by an electron to escape from the surface of the metal is called the work function of the metal and it is denoted by a Greek letter phi. This energy is required to overcome the electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive metal ions and electrons. The electron gains all of the energy of the incident photons and the photon no longer exists. 
This means that the energy of the incident photons performs two jobs. First, it is needed for the electron to escape from the metal surface or from the energy well. And secondly, to increase the kinetic energy of electrons. If energy of the incident photon is less than the threshold value, then HF will be equal to EK. The surface electrons cannot overcome the electrostatic forces of attraction and hence cannot escape from the surface of the metal. This energy from the photons is absorbed by electrons and appears as kinetic energy of electrons, which is lost to the metal ions when electrons collide with them. This warms up the metal. Due to the same reason, you may have noticed sometimes a metal plate placed in the vicinity of a table lamp gets hot. Again, threshold frequencies of metals vary from one to another. Hence, each metal has different value of work function phi. For example, threshold frequency of alkali metals, that is the first group in the periodic table like sodium, potassium, etc., lie in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. In zinc, ele conduction electrons are comparatively more tightly bound within the metal. Therefore, its threshold frequency is in the ultraviolet region of the spectrum. It is worth mentioning here that energy is not a function of intensity of light or it is not dependent on intensity. Low intensity light means fewer photons. Similarly, greater intensity of light means more photons per second, so more electrons are released per second. As greater intensity does not mean more energetic photons, so electron cannot have more energy. However, higher frequency means more energetic photons. Therefore, electrons gain more energy and can move faster. Now, if the frequency is above the threshold value, increasing the intensity of light will increase the number of photons photoelectrons being emitted and hence we may say that current that is the rate of flow of electric charge is proportional to intensity of light. Significance of Albert Einstein's photoelectric equation. Before uh, we discuss the significance of Albert Einstein's photoelectric equation, uh, you must remember few rules for photoelectric effect. Number one, Electrons removed from the metal are the surface electrons. Number two, interaction between a photon and an electron is one to one. Number three, if frequency of the incident radiation is greater than the threshold value, an electron is emitted. Number four, during photon-electron interaction, energy must be conserved. And number five, if frequency is less than threshold frequency, no photoelectric emission takes place. It does not depend on intensity of the incident radiation. So back to photoelectric equation, HF is equal to phi plus kinetic energy, where phi is the energy needed for the electron to escape from the energy well or the work function of the metal. Ke is the kinetic energy of photoelectrons. HF is the energy of the incident photon where H is Planck's constant and F is the frequency of electromagnetic radiation. Sometimes frequency is also denoted by letter nu instead of F. So both means frequencies. Now the electrons released, they have a range of kinetic energy up to some maximum value. That is, in this case, E k will be equal to E maximum. Electrons that have the maximum value of kinetic energy are the ones which were least tightly held in the metal. Now, when the incident radiation has a frequency F equal to threshold frequency or F0, then kinetic energy of the electrons will be zero and hence Einstein's photoelectric equation will reduce to only HF will be equal to phi. This term will be zero or phi will be equal to HF. HF or H nu and T this T denotes threshold either we put T here or we put not like nu not or F not or FT or nu T this is same thing that indicates threshold frequency so threshold frequency and Planck's constant their product gives work function or from this equation we can find out 
threshold frequency which will be equal to phi over h or phi will be equal to h c over lambda t where c over lambda t we replace instead of nu t according to famous uh, electromagnetic equation c is equal to nu lambda so nu will be equal to c over lambda it means that this threshold frequency is used to find the work function phi the amount of energy holding the electrons to the metal surface the work function is a specific property of the metal and is independent of the intensity of the incident radiation if incident radiation striking the metal surface has a frequency greater than the threshold value then the emitted electrons will have some kinetic energy as well if emitted energy is of the order of thousands of electron volt compton scattering occurs and if emitted energy is of the order of about millions of electron volts then pair production may takes place de broglie's hypothesis according to the wave particle duality the electron has a dual nature just like electromagnetic waves an electron interacts with matter as a particle the evidence comes from newtonian mechanics an electron travels through space as a wave the evidence comes from the diffraction of electrons this wave property of electron was first of all postulated by louis de broglie based on his question that if photons exhibit wave and particle properties would all matter do so as well einstein appreciated his brilliant idea and this hypothesis put forward by louis de broglie was eventually confirmed by davison and germer in 1927 these two scientists have experimentally shown electrons diffraction by single crystals of nickel which act like a diffraction grating and measure the wavelength of electrons by measuring the angles they were deflected by therefore de broglie's theory of matter having wave properties was correct he associated wave with matter de broglie's quantum mechanical wavelength associated with a particle is a characteristic of particles only and other material objects and therefore the waves associated with electrons are referred to as matter waves de broglie on the basis of these revolutionary findings was awarded a nobel prize in 1929 and his work marked the beginning of wave mechanics it must be noted here that de broglie's theory suggested that the wavelength of electron waves was very small about the size of an atom so the separation of the slits in a diffraction grating for electrons would have to be of the order of the size of an atom as we have studied that electron diffraction is an evidence for wave nature of particles we can reproduce the results of davison and germer in laboratory as well using the electron tube so this is an electron tube in which the electrons from the heated filament are accelerated to high speeds by the large potential difference between the negative terminal cathode and positive terminal anode now these accelerated electron beam passes through a thin sample of polycrystalline graphite it is made up of many tiny crystals like this each of which consist of large number of carbon atoms arranged in uniform atomic layers the electrons emerge from the graphite film and produce diffraction rings on the phosphor screen this fluorescent screen is phosphor screen so these diffraction rings produced are similar to those produced by light a wave passing through a small circular hole the electrons are diffracted by the carbon atoms and the spacing between the layers of carbon atoms the atomic layers of carbon behave like a diffraction grating with many slits the electrons show diffraction effects because their de broglie wavelength lambda is similar to the spacing between the atomic layers now in this experiment it's worth mentioning that the phosphor screen this fluorescent screen also gives a flash of light for each electrons that hits it these flashes build up to give the diffraction pattern de broglie's wavelength consider a particle of mass m moving with velocity v de broglie's consider de broglie's wavelength suppose a particle of mass m is moving with a velocity 
then de Broglie's wavelength is given by lambda equal to h over m v. We have studied earlier for photons we use Planck's equation which is E is equal to h nu. For the wave behavior of subatomic particles like electrons, we always use de Broglie's wavelength, where lambda is equal to h over mv. h is Planck's constant, v is the velocity of the particle, m is the relativistic mass, and lambda will be measured in meters. According to Einstein's mass energy equation, e is equal to mc square as these two equations have energy on the left hand side so we will equate right hand sides h nu will be equal to mc square or mc will be equal to h nu over c now according to famous wave equation c is equal to nu lambda where nu is the frequency of its inject photons please do not confuse this letter nu with v v is the velocity of the particle nu is the frequency of the photons so we will replace nu over c by 1 over lambda according to this equation. So mc will be equal to h over lambda. As mc is the product of mass and velocity, it will be denoted by momentum and letter p h over lambda. Therefore, lambda will be equal to h over p. Now in order to find out the units in which lambda will be measured, we will again look at this equation lambda is equal to h over p h is Planck's constant its value is 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules into seconds so h is measured in joules into seconds divided by mass is product of uh, momentum is product of mass and velocity mass in, is measured in kilograms and velocity in meters per second as 1 joule is equal to 1 newton into meter, therefore we will replace j with n into m times s divided by kilogram into meter per second. Again, 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second square into m into s divided by kilogram into meter per second. This mm will be cancelled out, kilogram, kilogram will be cancelled out. So lambda is left with m s minus 2. Again, when this s minus 1 is moved up, its power become positive. So 1 plus 1 will be 2. So s minus 2 and s plus 2 will also be cancelled out. So units of lambda will be in meters. Now this de Broglie's equation applies to all matter anything that has mass even to people. Now we will see an example and come to know why we do not notice wave behavior in people. Suppose a person whose weight is 70 kg, m is 70 kg. It is moving at a speed of 20 2.5 meters per second. These are arbitrary values, just we suppose. And it's running at a speed of 2.5 meter per second through an opening of width 0 0.90 meter. Now for diffraction to take place, this is the basic condition of diffraction that width of opening should be comparable with the wavelength of incident wave. Now we will apply de Broglie's equation lambda is equal to h over mv again h will be 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 divided by m is 70 kg into 2.5 after calculations this lambda comes out to be about 0 0.04 into 10 raised to the power minus 34. So lambda is of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 34 meters, which is far less than this width of opening. This is the reason that no diffraction effects would be observed as this lambda is very, very small as compared with the width of the gap. People cannot be diffracted through everyday gaps. 
hence wave model is not used to describe the behavior of people people are regarded as large particles the planck's constant h is the same that appears in the equation e equal to h nu for the energy of a photon it is fascinating how the planck's constant h is entangled or interlinked with the behavior of both matter as waves that is of electrons and electromagnetic waves as particles that is photons now de broglie's concept interprets electron in bohr's model as standing waves de broglie realized that the electrons orbiting the nucleus is considered as a circular standing wave in this way that consists of an integral number of wavelength fitting exactly within the orbit see these waves so electrons are considered as standing waves circular standing waves therefore their wavelength lambda will be equal to 2 pi r over n 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle and n is the shell number like n is 3 n is 4 as we move away from the nucleus shell number increases this means that the angular momentum of each electron is quantized as neil bohr postulated the electron as being a particle that orbits the nucleus in quantized orbits the answer of the question what keeps electrons in their orbits is based on stationary wave ideas that can predict the, predict the spectra of atoms accurately now as electrons are more massive than photons they have smaller wavelength and this is why electron microscopes have a better resolution than microscopes that use light diffraction of particle has many uses like to find the structure of matter the arrangement of atoms in metals and other materials using diffraction of slow moving electrons and to find out the spacing between them as well and the structure of complex molecules such as dna high speed electrons from particle accelerators have been used to determine the diameter of atomic nuclei and to investigate the internal structure of the nucleus